Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leonce. This edition's top stories, the Ministry of Health is investigating two new dengue-related deaths. Nearly 300 COVID-19 tests conducted in relation to the island's latest positive case are negative. And the Super Comprehensive Secondary School is gifted a smart classroom. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is currently investigating two dengue-related deaths. Both individuals were seen and managed at the Owen King European Union Hospital, where they presented with a clinical picture consistent with dengue fever. All samples were tested locally for dengue virus and have been sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, for confirmation. The Ministry of Health and Wellness awaits these confirmatory results. To date, St. Lucia has recorded one confirmed dengue-related death and is now investigating these two new dengue-related deaths. National epidemiologist Dr. Michel Fossois is urging the public to pay close attention to the signs and symptoms of dengue fever. In its mild form, dengue fever may present with fever, headache, pain behind the eyes, muscle and joint pains, and a red itchy rash. There are several warning signs that persons need to be aware of. These include intense and continuous abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, which means three or more episodes in one hour or four episodes in six hours, bleeding from the gums or nose, bleeding in the urine or in the vomit or dark colored stool, restlessness or drowsiness, as well as enlarged liver. Persons presenting with these warning signs should immediately seek medical attention. Approximately 5% of persons progress to a severe form of dengue infection. There is no specific treatment for dengue fever and management is supportive based on presenting signs and symptoms. As of October 3, 2020, a total of 540 confirmed cases have been recorded. The mean age of cases is 19 years old with an age range from 3 weeks to 84 years old. Uh, the age group 5 to 14 years old accounts for approximately 38% of cases. 49% of confirmed cases occurred during the month of August, with both serotypes 2 and 3 continuing to be in circulation. Hospitalization rate among cases is 25%, 65% of whom were in the age group under 14 years old. Although all health regions have reported cases of dengue fever, the highest prevalence continues to be reported in the northern part of the island with Castries, Grosely, and Babono accounting for 34%, 17%, and 8% of cases respectively. In the south, Viewfort accounts for 14% of cases, followed by Denry with 10% and Miku with 6%. Among the northern settlements, Castries, Bexo, and Babono have confirmed the most cases, while in the south, Denry Village and Viewfort Town confirmed the most cases. The public is reminded that both dengue serotypes 2 and 3 are in circulation. The likelihood of persons presenting with severe form of dengue is therefore increased. The public is asked to assist in the control of dengue fever by eliminating breeding sites in and around their homes. And this can be done by discarding of all open containers with stagnant water and surrounding your home on a regular basis using insect repellent, which may be applied directly to the skin, clothing, or mosquito nets, wearing long sleeve shirts and long pants, especially during the hours of highest mosquito activity. In other health-related matters, this time concerning COVID-19, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George says the island's 29th COVID patient is doing well at the respiratory hospital. The 48-year-old minibus driver has had COVID-19 tests repeated and validated and is confirmed positive. Since Saturday, 10th October 2020, a total of 500 persons have been reviewed in relation to this new case. And this includes close contacts, minibus drivers and commuters from the bus route and residents from the community. 283 tests have been done and the results received so far are negative. About 50 people have been placed in quarantine to date and the community and contacts of the patients will be monitored for a period of 14 days to assess the impact of this case. 
This past weekend, in response to this case, investigations and contact tracing commenced in communities and amongst key populations of concern, and these activities are still ongoing. In addition, respiratory clinics were extended over this weekend to support contact tracing related to this case. The constituency council office in La Rochus was set up as a community outpost to aid in accelerating assessments and testing. As part of the advanced planning for the possibility of a community outbreak, the present quarantine capacity and testing capacity has been reviewed and the capacity for increased cases which may the CMO says interventions in the more affected communities included health education and the distribution of face masks at key locations and the strengthening of preventative and control measures with the support of community leaders. The scheduled social activities for affected communities are being reviewed to determine an, their adherence to protocols or the requirement for cancellation. This new confirmed case presents a high level of risk at the community level we continue to appeal to the public to cooperate and share relevant information with the health team. We also remind the public that the Ministry of Health remains the official source of accurate information and should seek clarification at that level. The five community respiratory clinics remain open for persons with presentive signs and symptoms and the 311 information hotline is available to help address COVID-19 related questions and concerns. The treatment and care for COVID-19 related conditions remain free of charge to the public. A total of 8,827 COVID-19 tests have been conducted in St. Lucia to date. The Taiwan Embassy and the International Cooperation and Development Fund, ICDF, under the ICT for Educational Development Project have facilitated the creation of a smart classroom at the Sufra Comprehensive Secondary School. We have Rajavar Lawrence with a report. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, Sustainable Development is heightening the integration of Information Communication Technology, ICT, in schools island-wide. The aim is to transform teaching and learning in St. Lucia through the use of appropriate digital technologies that engender a literate, creative, productive, inclusive, and competitive society. The Embassy of Taiwan in St. Lucia has been an integral partner in the implementation of the ICT in education strategy. The Embassy, along with the International Cooperation and Development Fund, the ICDF, has provided for the transitioning of a smart classroom at the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School. Michelle Charles is the Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations. The generous contributions of charging carts, tablets, laptops, projectors, Chromebooks and other equipment sets this school well on a path for infusing technology into its instruction and learning. The presentation today is of tools and equipment necessary for the development of a diverse, educated and resilient people. These are tools and equipment necessary for ensuring that our graduates and teachers are 21st century compliant. Taiwanese Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Chen, has congratulated the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School for its keen desire in developing student interest in coding and robotics. 100 Acer Chromebook, as you can see, and 50 tablets, numerous integrative displays and projectors will be provided today to the teachers and students of Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School. These equipments are aimed to apply information technology in developing teaching materials for specialized courses and to create a smart learning environment. ICT opens up another dimension of learning. We sincerely hope that through the implementation of the ICT in education, teachers and students will have the opportunity to explore different learning experiences and feel empowered and confident to pursue their passion and dreams. Noting that the program meets the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 4 and 9, which speak to inclusive and equitable quality education and fostering innovation respectively, Principal of the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School, Joel Schalmine, hailed the ICT in Education project as a great vision for success in the school system. 
Thank you, Madam Minister and Madam PS, for effecting change in the educational landscape of St. Lucia, not only with this project, but also the Pro Futuro Digital Education Program, which will deliver similar benefits to students at the primary school level. Thank you to the Taiwanese government for equipping schools, us, SCSS, with what is needed, the equipment and the digital education training for teachers to be more effective in the classroom so that when students leave here, they are more ready to take on the world. They are critical thinkers, communicators, collaborators, and creative, the fundamental four C's of the 21st century, which will germinate and flourish from integration of ICT in education. Among the items donated to the school are Chromebook tablets, projects, laptops, and projector screens. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. St. Lucia's Citizenship by Investment program has launched its new brand and enhanced website as part of an overall strategy to become one of the most visible, viable and unique programs internationally. The CIP's rebrand coincides with its fifth year of operation and the program is now focused more than ever on using St. Lucia's citizenship in the furtherance of national development goals in the short to long term. The new CIP visual identity incorporates the country's matriarchal brand, featuring the immediately recognizable famous pitons. However, the CIP notes that this rebranding is much more than a logo or a new look and feel in the market. It is the unveiling of an entire strategy in motion to develop and be perceived as the best run and most successful global citizenship program in the world. After five years of operating, the CIP is well poised to capitalize on an increased demand for investments via its citizenship program. Even with COVID, when we would expect that there'd be a reduction of numbers, it is the best time that CIP has witnessed over the five years. And I think what underpins this is the basic principle that the issue of international mobility that is so required by people is not phased by whether there's a pandemic or not. Persons want to move and they want that international mobility. And for St. Lucia, I think we were at the right time, the right place. And I think the, the, the whole rebranding and the whole narrative that we've written will really put us in good stead and will continue uh, showing those increases in numbers. A highlight of the rebranding is the enhanced website with user experience and user interface capabilities to allow for secure online applications and also serves as a powerful marketing tool with its rich content and information. The brand pillars and tagline for the re-image CIP are authentic, respected, secured. At its core here, I mean, you know, the integrity of our program is of utmost importance. So, you know, for example, audits. Our program is audited every year. The financial statements, the, the, the entire um, report of the audit is delivered on time to cabinet in line with legislative requirements. From an integrity point of view, I can sit here and, and say very clearly that every file that comes to the boardroom, and indeed every file must come to the board to be decided on. So it's a, it's a board of five that decides on every file, um, and every file that comes to our boardroom has had to go through all of the regulatory you know, due diligence, all of the private due diligence, and then all of our you know, national security and international security partners. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, is pleased with the direction that the CIP has taken under his leadership. Key benefits from the revenue from the CIP program include availability and ease of access to affordable funding for investments and the development in the country via the National Economic Fund, as well as improving the country's net worth and credit rating. In addition to improving um, the uh, credit rating of our country, is that it drives investment. So whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in education, whether it's in infrastructure, it makes uh, free capital, monies that, in fact, we don't have to pay for. Um, it's like having grant money to invest in our country. The difference is, is my government is not intending to use it as grant money. We think that um, it should remain as equity or as a loan even to government in order to preserve and make sure it's a sovereign fund. 
The impressive performance of the rebranded CIP, even with the context of COVID-19, is good news for the country as the program seems poised to become a significant contributor to GDP and the furtherance of national development goals. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness embarks on an immunization campaign to ensure that all children aged 0 to 5 years old are up to date with their vaccinations. Through October and November, officials will conduct school and community checks to make up for any health service disruptions during the pandemic. Data shows the immunization schedules of many children were interrupted since the onset of the pandemic in St. Lucia. In response, health officials have launched a vaccination sensitization campaign to restore the population's immunity levels, targeting children aged 0 to 5 years old. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Glensford Joseph gave an update on St. Lucia's vaccine status. What we have observed is a fall in our vaccination coverage to 84%. And it is critical that we restore and maintain 95% or above vaccination coverage that will produce what is known as herd immunity. Herd immunity is the resistance to the spread of a contagious disease within a population that results if a sufficiently high proportion of individuals are immune to the disease, especially through vaccination. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has developed a national vaccine registry to capture every child's vaccine record and has partnered with the Department of Education to commence a review of the students' health cards. School safety officer in the Ministry of Education, Bernays Kodra, encourages parents to cooperate when the health cards are requested. Whilst you may not have gotten the opportunity to get your children immunized before the academic year, we want you to partner with your schools by bringing in the health cards to your schools so we can see how many children have been immunized and those who have not been. And for those who have not been, we want to encourage the parents. You can take your child to the nearest wellness center or you can make arrangements with your school and a nurse will come to the school to get your child immunized. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has also scheduled community outreach activities. We'll also be conducting some community outreaches. So you will be seeing our health team within the various communities. Um, again, you will be told, it will be aired as to when this will happen. So it will also give you an opportunity. I know some persons may not necessarily be comfortable in going to the facilities at this time. However, we will be coming to you. We will be doing our community outreaches in addition to our home visits as well to ensure that um, the children are covered and they do have all of the required vaccines necessary. Media discussions have been scheduled and vaccination leaflets and public service announcements will be disseminated, all conveying the significance of immunization. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leonce reporting. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Play. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Equion with Primus Hutchinson. Merci à toi, Jesse. 
Merci, Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information. Le gouvernement de cette lycée, GIS, et la télévision nationale, puis NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Créole. Posé au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de l'Éducation, on est Dr. Gail Rigobert. J'ai fait un appel pour toute l'école PIA, continuer pour suivre ces règles qui sont en place pour protection contre la maladie corona. De mon adresse, l'EDI, ministre de l'Éducation, fait comprendre que le 12 octobre, qu'a marché six semaines depuis la saison de l'école neuf a commencé le 7 septembre. Côté département éducation, tu officiellement bienvenu les étudiants avec les instituteurs vivant à l'école. Ministre de l'Assurance, le département éducation a continué pour procurer toute assistance qui est nécessaire pour la bonne santé et la protection pour nous les étudiants et les instituteurs et les étudiants à l'école. Dr. Rigobert déclare que, en considération de la neuf de maladie corona, le département de santé a tenu attention à la situation et a continué pour dépendre à ce conseil et à la département de santé et qui a toujours parlé pour prendre toute démarche qui est nécessaire pour protéger les étudiants et les instituteurs. Comme les Grecs des affaires santé, j'ai montré que la maladie a été pour un peu de temps pour venir. Alors, c'est faux nation ni capacité pour ça vivre et puis et pour prendre des marches qui sont nécessaires pour protéger et tenir les enfants au courant pendant les sessions à l'école qui continuent. Ministre de l'Éducation, sur tout le monde, en particulier les étudiants, les parents, les instituteurs et tout le monde qui concerne, à somme et comme maintenant aussi, pour continuer pour suivre et obéir toutes les règles, servir les masques à Sophie en public, rester six pieds de distance, regarder à l'autre, toujours laver la main et pour ne pas sembler en grand limou en public. Si vous avez suivi les pièces d'enfants qui ont montré que vous êtes malade, tenez vous à l'école et cherchez pour l'assistance médicale si ça est nécessaire à l'air. Docteur Le Gobert, il y a et puis effort gouvernement et ministère de l'éducation, tout effort qu'il a fait pour faire assurer que tous les enfants de l'école recevaient des goûts d'éducation qui ont mérité. En ce plaisir, si j'ai trouvé discuter, il y a une grande session qui consiste de productivité qui a pris cours en cette administration financière. Là. C'est un côté qui a discuté pour payer, à ce pays, cette ci pas placer toutes les îles dans un seul point. C'est que le point maintenant, le département de finances, Mme Esther Rigobert, explique que le concept là, qui a commencé ces sessions là depuis lundi, a décidé qu'il a engagé tous les différents secteurs pour discuter de grands sujets. Dans l'agricole, la ni manufacturing, la ni comme l'autre secteur, et que tout ça amène économique growth, y a tout ni potential pour amener des vis en pays à avance, en pour en assurer que nous ni un bon pays, un pays qui fort et qu'on économie qui fort. C'est le Madame Rigobert. Initiative ça là, c'est pour encourager cette lycée pour coopérer ensemble pour développement économique. Cette lycée. Attention c'est à la productivité pour assurer nous tous um, par attention et um, désir et pour assurer nous venir tout, um, ensemble, yon moun, tout le monde, um, um, public secteur, private secteur, tout le monde venir ensemble pour avancer cette ici. Grand session ça là, hot concept de productivité, kabout vendredi semaine ici et toute session kapawet face au public à sa télévision NTN. La a un changement en prix pétrole pour le mois d'octobre. Ça s'est pris en détail pour diesel, LPG 20, 22 et qui ont salive. Pris en détail pour gasoline et kérosine, pas changé. Ça c'est 10 dollars et qui ont chien 6 go par litre et bien 12 dollars et 6 go de sous par gallon. Kérosine, pas changé non plus. Et qui est 1 dollar et qui ont chien 12 go par litre et bien 5 dollars et qui ont chien 7 go par gallon. Pris diesel, descend, sorti 2 dollars et qui ont chlin 6 go de sou pour et, euh, 2 dollars et qui ont chlin 2 go par litre et bien 10 dollars et 3 chlin 3 go pour 10 dollars et qui ont chlin 6 go de sou par galon. Cylindre 20 livres là, puis à descendre sorti 28 dollars et qui ont chlin 6 go pour 28 dollars et 3 go de sou par cylindre. Cylindre 22 livres là, puis à descendre sorti 31 dollars et puis 9 go de sou 
Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. And you can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucian Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay with us for more NTN programming.